that is not really suitable anymore for one person to build everything. But here you go. Um, well, that's it, uh, basically. There's no consequences. No cookies being tried. Oh, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> uh, let me check. I have to go back to this slide here. accidentally clicked away this this one here and I have to drag this one to this side and then I'm back on track. Okay so let's go forward. So a bit of context. Drupal let me check the time too. Is there any clock here? Fantastic. Yeah that's fine. Uh, a bit of context. <clears throat> Explode. This is a company that is Specialized in historic research about explosives from the Second World War, mainly in the soil, in the, in the ground. You might think, is that a thing even? Yes, it is a thing. Uh, these people do research uh, of where those explosives might be based on historic data, on events that happened, that occurred in the past. And then they do risk assessments for, for companies like the Port of Rotterdam or for different big infrastructural companies. So you think, is that a thing? Yes, it is a thing. There's an estimate, still 100,000 of kilograms of undiscovered w, uh, World War II explosives still in the ground. That's the estimate. estimate. And about 40 uh, World War II munitions are discovered every week. One of them being an airplane bomb. So there is quite a big thing. So you can imagine if you build a bridge, you build a big bridge building, and you bump into a bomb, and you hire your crane and your team and everyone, and you have to stop that and, every, and pay everyone anyway. It's going to cost you a lot of money. So to try to get to know, to know where those bombs might be, might be a lifesaver. Might save a lot of money. I wanted to present this guy too. This is Menno, this is my client. I've worked with this guy from uh, the beginning of the project, and we worked two of us together. I was three days a week. He was maybe one or two days a week. We had lots of meetings, and I'm going to talk about this guy frequently, so you know he had a face. You know, you know who he is. This is Menno. So this wasn't a team of one. This was a team of two. Uh, Menno being the client. And Menno, when I got there, he explained to me that the thing with explosives is it's about risk analysis, risk assessment, and risk assessment is about two variables. It's likelihood of something to happen and impact. Now, likelihood of a bomb to explode is about the same as winning the lottery, not very likely. However, the impact is infinite. So it doesn't matter how unlikely it is that a bomb explodes, because the impact is endless, that the risk is always high. It's always the maximum risk. So that's why it's so important to try and avoid situations where you actually have to, you know, uh, uh, where you have to find a bomb or you have to deal with it unexpectedly. So, like many other companies, they were working with Excel sheets. Uh, they had an objective that they said, we want to do this for ourselves, but they, we also want to do this for the whole of the Netherlands. So all these companies doing the same type of research. We want to have one big database, and currently we're just working with Excel sheets, and we're sending them back and forwards, and emails and stuff. Everything got lost. It's very difficult to keep track. So, what they want, wanted was one single database, relational data between events, artifacts, stuff that was in the ground, Wikipedia data, uh, maps. They want to have relational data, so Drupal entities. They want to keep track of everything, Drupal revisions, and they wanted to visualize everything in map. And that's where we used another tool called, called Google Layers. I'll get to that in a bit. And the timeline has been this. We started uh, in 2019 with the kickoff. Uh, we made an MVP, uh, half a year later that was done, and then we started talking to clients they already had, like the Port of Rotterdam, and they said, well, we're going to join, we're going to put some money in, and you can continue developing. And then later on, another consultancy called Sarikel. Uh, they're Sarikel and Explode, are independent consultancies. Um, they also joined, so we have three investors, and they kept on financing this project. And I'll show you, uh, I'll show you what the project is just now. Uh, before I get to that, just one final slide of the, the tech uh, stack. So what we used was Drupal, obviously open layers for the maps, Bulma for theming, 
GDAL, that's a terminal, that's a command line tool for processing different geo geographical files, shape files and stuff. And then Chromium, that was Chromium and Puppeteer to render PDFs. And on the server, we just had a virtualized server on DigitalOcean with the LAMP stack. Uh, and for project management, we didn't use Gira, Gira, Gamera. Gira, Gira. Gira, Gira. Gira. Uh, well, we didn't even do that. Uh, we used Monday, and I thought that was also a really interesting yeah. thing that we used this for, for our project management. I'll get to that in a bit. And, uh, and we used GitLab for our repo and some continuous uh, uh, deployment. So, um, someone had for the rubber, I'm not going to give you any names. He said, like, thanks to this project where we put all these data, and then I'll show you. Don't worry. He said, we probably saved the country as a whole. Right now, about 50 million. <laughs> of which very little that went to me. Yeah. <laughs> Save your applause when I get it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, oh, I signed up. Wow. Uh, okay. So I'm going to see if I can show you the project. This is the project. I'm not going to go into detail because I want to talk more about how we project manage this and some technical details. But just to get for, get, uh, for you to get an idea, um, we have two types of environments. We have a library where we have oh, wiki data, uh, historic events. You can see them here. You can zoom in. Uh, at certain zoom levels, more stuff appears. So you think there's not a lot of data in here. It's currently about 6,000 events registered. And some stuff appears when you zoom in. Uh, well, you can see that there's quite a lot, and we still we are still dealing with how to manage all this data. And then there's not even all the events are actually uh, switched on, so there's a lot of stuff going on here. Um, so this is all the wiki data, um, and you can click on an, on an event, and then in the bottom there's a little slider. Uh, that allows you to click through all these uh, all these events. Um, you can you can view them in, and you can see all the entity relations. And this is just normal field groups in Drupal, uh, just relating everything and rendering all the all the all the content in field groups. So on the library side, we have a map. This is a view. This is Drupal view uh, with a display plugin for open layers that plugs into this and connects it thesis with some configuration that you can set. And then there's the list of events too. Um, am I actually automatically connected to the internet? No, I'm not. I should have. No, I am. Oh, wow. I didn't check that. Oh, that's still my phone. Okay, come on. So, um, so it, yeah. can we ask some questions? Also, or is it maybe? Yeah, maybe that's easier to leave that till the end. Yeah. And yeah. then save them up. Yeah. I think that's that's probably easiest. Okay. And this is a this is the same view but in a list. So you have uh, events, you have a timeline, you have sources, wiki data. Then each project has different editors, um, administrators where you can actually draw conclusions. They, these admins they can put in analysis based on these events, and then you get these risk areas based on what happened in the past. Maybe mine sweeping or mines that went into the soil, whatever. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in here. I'm not going into detail. Maybe later I'll, I'll show you a little bit more. But the idea is at least library content and then per project content. And the project, depending on your rights, you I'm now currently logged in as Nano, so he sees everything. But a specific user from the portal project might log in and see a couple of his own projects or her projects. Um, yeah, so this is basically the platform. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in here. Um, so if you're interested in knowing more about this, please ask me later. But it's not, it's not about what's in the project. Obviously, um, I want to show everything, but that's not the, the point of this show, of this talk. Uh, so, let me see if I can get back to my presentation. If I'm logged out. That is okay. Well, it seems that is interesting, isn't it? 
I'd love to hang out just when I want to do this stuff. Show us your password. <laughs> That is why they said that the backup on the box is even. So this is what I call PPP, Proof of Concept and Post uh, Protocol. Now this is all <laughs> going to be in my book. And this is uh, another thing um, that I said, look, Drupal is a cycling tool. Um, let's cycle it. So let's, go, don't, please, don't try and convert your thoughts to text, put it in the backlog, then I have to suck it up, interpret it, which I'm not going to be able to. I'm going crazy here. And then I have to build it. No, we're just you and me, we're going to sit here, and we're going to click through it, and you want that column to the right, we'll do it here, now, not here. We have what we call the uh, time to get coffee policy. If I can do it in the time that you get coffee, we're going to do it like this. If it takes me longer, we'll put it in the backlog. So we save ourselves a lot of time just building stuff without a backlog, without anything. There was many stuff was in his mind, and we just build it. Um, and then the last one, and you know, we, I had three acronyms uh, alliterating, so I thought, you know, I'm gonna misspell philosophize, just to have F, F, F. Uh, so this is about the future. There's a lot of stuff that you wanna build in the future, in the long term, you, you think of a lot of stuff, so how do you discuss that? Uh, same thing here, I, we, we philosophized about that together. So he put some stuff on paper. But as soon as we got into too much detail, we said stop here, I don't care. Because I can't concentrate on what I'm doing now if I have to think of some color button on the right hand side of the screen that I have to do in three months time. 
No, I don't want to know that. You know, we'll, we'll do that, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So that's what I call philosophize about the future, but not formalize the future. Um, so these four acronyms are our bit of our strategy to how to how we managed to do this project with just a team of one developer, a designer, front end backend, and Menno as the product owner. Then uh, about Drupal technology. Um, this is maybe not even specific to working on your own, but goes for every project. Um, there's a couple of things that I learned because I worked on my own. You're forced to do everything, and that is great fun. Uh, you have to dive into the deep. Um, and one of those things is kind of the urge of especially older generation Drupal developers that are still coming from Drupal 6, 7, 5 maybe. Everything is a node? No. Everything is not a node. Uh, lots of things shouldn't be a node. If you have an ERM, an entity relation model in mind, then build those entities and don't try to force them into nodes. You know? They don't have to be promoted like a node. They, they are not pages with teasers and stuff. No, they're entities. Many advantages of having entities. You can get to, you get to configure all the handlers yourself. You can get to define what they do. And you don't have to override anything. And it's not difficult. So that is also what I learned from working in Drupal 8 and Drupal 9, Drupal 10. Those APIs have become so powerful, it's nothing, it has nothing to do with Drupal 7. So there's no need to use all kinds of modules if you can use the APIs. So that is the, the next uh, thing. Well, before I get to that, I just want to explain. I don't know if you now in hindsight why I put this slide in. <laughs> Uh, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna skip this. this is so, cool. so these these two lines uh, are the holy grail for me. Literally, I've discovered these two lines. The top one is BB default triple. This is, these are two access these are two handlers in an in an entity annotation. One of them is the access. It's always there. And the other one is query access, and it will be there if you enable the entity API control module if I'm not mistaken. So, with these two handlers, you can do all kinds of stuff very easily with lots of control. Well, there are dozens of modules out there that also do that stuff. But you're gonna have to learn these modules, they have to fit your needs, and they don't, and you have a lot of extra UI, and a lot of extra overhead that you don't need. So I learned that a lot of this stuff, all of the entities that we used in, in the platform for Explosives are all custom entities that all have these handlers and they do group line functionality and they have uh, access restricted by whoever logs in as a member of a project and maybe well, all that type of stuff. We just build it by just implementing a handler and I think that is a real time saver. If you, if you dive into these annotations, you, in the long run, you save a lot of time. So in, in that same line, everything is not a contract module. I think that there's, in a lot of corporate environments or a lot of uh, industries, that are kind of the urge to see if there's a contract module to solve your problem. I'm not against contract modules. Contract modules are, are really good, great, a lot of stuff. I just installed the module and I sold everything. But then there's other stuff that it is worth investigating if you can just build it with the APIs in Drupal. I'll give you an example. Uh, in the project, we have, uh, let me check if I can still find. Yeah. So if you look here, there's a tab called Amistating, these are tenders. Um, there is an option for projects to generate a documentation with frozen data, so that's data of specific revisions of all the entities that are in here, and the person logging in needs a code to log in. So no email, no password, just a four-digit number. That code to log in gives you access and you have a user, well you don't have actually have a user, but that you use an authentication provider. That's all in core and it's really that simple to build that stuff. Yeah, you can, I'm sure there's modules on there, log in with code. But, you know, it's quicker to build it yourself than to find the module, study it, learn the API of the module, when all these things are in Drupal. Uh, another thing uh, is also for external uh, 
stuff. Um, this is the, there's PDF generation modules out there. How would you if you didn't have any tool or program or whatever? How would you if you're on your computer? How would you generate PDF? Normally, we go to a website, click on print the PDF in Chrome. This is what, what we did here. You just print PDF in Chrome, headless Chrome, so there's no UI, there's no interface, and it runs on the server. But this is, yeah, there's a couple of dots there that has a couple of bit more configuration. This is all the stuff you need to print a PDF and have complete control over it. You can add a header, you can add a footer, you can style it with CSS. So, another example of some things you don't need contract monitor for when there's actually better tools outside the scope for of Drupal to solve these things. So that's why I try to, you know, this is all about time saving and restraint. Uh, so this was a time saver, just to see what's outside of Drupal to solve these things. Uh, another thing uh, is obviously what I mentioned before, everything is not React. Uh, I love React, I've worked with React, I have to be pulled into it by some people, and uh, now I love it. Um, but for this project, uh, we didn't do React, because, you know, everyone who has a decoupled project is just going to be a lot of time. And what I did discover is that you can do everything you want with Ajax commands. And Ajax commands are at the core of everything involving connecting back end with front end in Drupal. Uh, you can build your own Ajax commands, and you don't need jQuery to build them. You can use vanilla vanilla JavaScript. So I'll show you an example in the platform. Um, keep on figuring out where things are here. Um, in project, for example, we made a, a functionality that you can just leave inline comments in a document. So you can just type a comment and it's there. Uh, there's notifications being sent. This is quite interactive. You can click it away, you can load it again. I'll load the page again, and then it's still there. This works with the filter API in Drupal, for it's Ajax commands, and it feels quite reacty, I think. If I, these things we have to solve, and if everything is the monolith of Drupal, then these things are quite easy to, to make. Um, Let me check where I am. Yeah. So everything is not designed. Um, we chose Bulma. I don't know if you're familiar with Bulma. Bulma is like Bootstrap, but nicer for me at least. So it has nicer classes that you can read, and it has a nicer default. And I said to Menno. If we're going to pull this off and we have to build this on with this very little team, then use Bulma, and that's going to be our design. I don't want you to, you to tell me that you want theme buttons or, you know, we're going to stick to Bulma because Bulma has nice defaults and, you know, that's, that will give us a nice looking design. So that was another kind of effort to restrain ourselves and, and focus on the important bits. So this is where we used uh, Bulma. And then the last uh, thing is everything is not Kubernetes. This is a restricted environment. There's probably about four people working constantly on it, and there might be more concurrent users at some point, but we can do with the digital ocean server of, of 8 gigabytes of RAM and, and a hard disk of 160 gigabytes. We do are trying to limit, we're now finding the limits of the, of the file saving, so we need to get like an S3 bucket or something. But, you know, there's a temptation, I think, in many companies, many projects, to go with, jump on the bandwagon of the latest technology, and there's not really a reason for it. And this has never crashed this, this platform. We might, you know, we, we might have to increase the resources as we see it reaching the limits. But, you know, Scaling issues are luxury issues, so um, it's a good thing if you come in. So, I'm wrapping up. Food for thought. Is this like the holy grail of the future? Let's stop doing scrum teams, let's work alone. Well, I think, 
I work, I like working alone, I also like working on teams. That's the benefits obviously to both. Uh, working alone allows you to do a lot of stuff and the full width of a project. You have to learn stuff that you're not familiar with, but there's no peer review. Um, there's a single point of failure. If I, you know, if that bus hits me, then you know, I, you know, I try to do stuff in a best practice way, uh, so someone else can take over. We did in this project got a couple of those things covered. We have an escrow account where we put all our data and repositories in. So if any of these three investors or me disappear from the planet, and there's one entity in the middle of it that has the key to recover everything. We also did, on the initiative of the Port of Rotterdam, a security audit by North Wave, I don't know if that rings a bell, that's a security company, and they did a complete, uh, it's, it's a very lucrative business, by the way, they spend a weekend on this. I'm definitely considering moving to that. Um, and yeah, there, there were a couple of details, uh, that we could prove even some stuff that's default enabled in Drupal, like version headers, that they say, look, if you put a version header in your uh, response, then people can see that you might have a, have a version that's not supported or has security updates. So all these little details, they, they help me uh, a lot with that. So there was a bit of peer review, but not really. So uh, that's definitely not a, a good thing. And the third thing is obviously Menno. Uh, Menno was able to keep me on track, to give me the information that I needed. We, there was, everything was talked about. I knew about the budget, I knew about the negotiations, uh, everything was open. But it was not like so, sometimes you have to work with someone who just kind of throws it out all on the table and you just have to make, a, make it work. And he understood my side of the, of the job and I understood this and you know we kept ourselves restrained um, and that worked pretty well so I can imagine that not all of, all clients can do that uh, it will have to depend on the client uh, security concerns I've mentioned that already so uh, yeah um, I think that this working on a loan or maybe in a bigger company to have someone being responsible for the full width of the project, just, I don't know if that would work. I mean, there's now this consensus that scrubbing and big teams and everyone does their bit is the way we work. But I think in some, some situations this might work too, whether you're a freelancer or just work in a, in a company. Obviously, as long as you stick to DVD, 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 I don't know. That is important. <laughs> So, uh, well, that's, that's not too bad, is it? Well, that's it. Um, <laughs> so, questions? The one guy had a question left. Yeah. <laughs> Would you consider uh, changing your strategy in your company to uh, I yeah. do like the idea of having a smaller backlog. <laughs> yeah. You had a question. Yeah, um, uh, have you ever uh, thought of not doing it in Drupal at all? Because you said you were using the. Uh, what was it for to, to put the relations together in, the, in this case? The, no, the relations is all entities, so that's all Drupal. Questions so people know it's the question is um, whether or not I would reconsider using Drupal at all in this project. Is that correct? Yes, because I, I once had a, I, I worked a lot on a port of Amsterdam actually. Yeah. Um, but uh, in another project, I um, I used a lot of uh, the, the, well, that was Drupal 7, the relations module, ah. to, uh, to put the relations on uh, a lot of entities. And um, uh, it was a very complex uh, project, and me and my colleague afterwards we said, "Well, we probably wouldn't have done this in, in Drupal at all if we could choose another time." Well, I think that there's look. I'm a, I'm a Drupal developer, so it makes a bit. 
the tool is as good as the one working with the tool. So it, for me, I couldn't promise them to build everything with another technology if I'm not proficient in that technology. I, yeah, this could, could have been, been, been built with any technology. But there's a couple of advantages that we use Drupal, and we, it's a lifesaver. It's a lot of time we saved. Uh, and Drupal 7 would have been tricky, I agree. But Drupal 8, uh, 9, all the entities, all the relations that you built, the API you have to do that, is so powerful. Plus, you get all the UI stuff out of the box. So you don't have to build the UI. There is no, as far as I know, no um, technology that gives us so much power to do this. And like we, the MVP we built, which already had a lot of this stuff, was built in, in three months' time, or three days a week, by one person. Uh, that's not thanks to me, it's thanks to Drupal. Without Drupal, that wouldn't have been possible, I'm convinced. But at the end, where we get are now at this stage, yeah, I think, you know, we've, so it's been three years, so in hindsight, we could have started with different technology, but then we wouldn't have built the MVP and we wouldn't have sold it to the Fort Rotterdam because we wouldn't have time to do all that in this short amount of time. So, uh, yes, I would, would still do it in Drupal. Okay. Yeah. Anyone else? Okay, well, could have added some more slides. Um, but I'm not going to do that, I think it's good enough. Okay, thank you.